This is a quick video for the uh, rebuild of a Garmin 2.1 liter autopilot pump. I purchased this pump used on an internet forum named The Whole Truth. Um, the purpose was to have a backup for one that had failed on my boat already. Um, I didn't want to take the failed unit out and rebuild it because that would deem my steering unusable. So my theory is to buy a used pump, rebuild it, see what makes it tick, hopefully fix it, swap that out with the already broken pump on my boat, and then uh, rebuild the already broken pump, which will be uh, another video at some point in time. So um, keep in mind, this is for reference only, and uh, thanks for watching. Just a little miss there. Turns out that this, the actual pump itself, uh, just slides right off. No need to take that screw off. Just making a quick reference here for future as to the polarity, uh, positive and negative. Hindsight being 2020, the wires only go a certain distance and they lay perfectly as they are, so ultimately it wasn't necessary. But I find it good to make sure to mark some of the fundamental things as you're taking things apart. This is the pump part of the entire assembly. So if you look at the unit on the far end, you've got all the check valves and the hose attachments. And then you have this, the actual pump itself, which is attached to the electric motor on the other side. So as the motor spins um, the inside of this unit, you see those five little springs and, and cylinders there, or what have you. And what they do is they kind of force the fluid into the check valve system. Um, it's exactly the same, or at least very similar to a C-Star steering helm. If you've ever taken one of those apart, you basically just have these plungers on springs that are on kind of a, uh, a sloped, um, metal piece that forces the fluid through the entire thing. Just using the same fluid that I use uh, for the entire steering system here. I wasn't too sure exactly when I was going to get to changing the unit out, so I wanted to make sure I put stuff back so it was pretty well lubricated so it wouldn't rust or corrode or anything while waiting. Before putting the unit back together again, I wanted to make sure that it uh, sort of looked the part. And uh, very fortunate to have a dear friend that is very proficient with Cerakoting. So took it up to his place where he sandblasted it, Cerakoted the, uh, the aluminum parts, the steel body, and the mount, and then uh, treated them in the oven for about two to three hours. Uh, got a very, very nice hardened finish that uh, I believe is going to last quite a bit longer than the OEM one. All right, so now it's time to put it back together. I like to lay everything out the order of which it goes, start at one end. This is the encoder, so this is actually what gives the feedback to the entire system of the position of the motor itself. Just two little screws, um, small Phillips. This 
So these two little screws are Phillips, I think, number twos that I'm putting in. They're really just placeholders. Uh, I have to assume it's uh, for other mounting techniques for this motor using somewhere else. And there's a little quick edit. I may not show you about five minutes of me fiddling with this cable trying to get it back into place. Uh, just takes a little perseverance and boom, in it went. Putting the armature into the back side of that encoder. Throwing the brushes in, actually incredibly simple. I have a, a little spring in there and then a little retention uh, part and then uh, a flat headed uh, cover that you can slide right in. Yep, another edit there uh, to save you the boredom of watching me fiddle with the two screws that hold the housing together. Um, what ends up happening here is you've got two I don't know, seven inch bolts or what have you made out of steel that really like the magnets for the uh, for the motor. And there's only about like an eighth of an inch when they're all the way through for you to put them into the hole on the other side. So, you know, you finally get it into position and then you move really quickly and the bolt goes right to the magnet pulling itself out of the hole. So it's just a matter of being patient. I ended up using a dental pick to slide into the eighth inch space that you have available and then pull the bolt into the prospective hole and then tighten it up. Once that happened, easy peasy. And that was pretty much it. I have to say getting the, uh, the cable out and then getting the housing back together again were probably the most difficult parts of the entire process. But ultimately, they're really not that difficult, just a little tedious. So, um, you know, pretty easy to do. Hope this uh, video provides you with a reference. And if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments below. I hope this video was helpful. If you ever wanted to know what was inside a autopilot pump. And thank you very much for watching.